tell us a bit about the paper that you wrote in 2011. It was about the escaping the fragility trap. And what is fragility to you? We want to know, you know I mean, both of them are training as an economist from the experience you, you've gathered. Um, how do you define that term? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so I'll tell you about the paper because that, that, that actually then gets us to the fragility. Uh, and that, again, you know, was, was as a result of an experience when th at that time, I was a chief economist for the sub-Saharan African region. And there, what I noticed was that, you know, we would allocate aid based on research that I and others had done, uh, based on the quality of policies and institutions in countries. And there were a group of countries, which were these fragile states, where the policies and institutions were, were terrible. That's one of the reasons they were fragile states. But as a result, they got very little aid. And that then led to a syndrome where countries would, would, would be doing very badly. They get even less aid because they were doing badly. So they would do even worse the next year. And then they would get even less aid. And you would get into this syndrome where, you know, there might be a situation where they were caught in a trap. And I remember, you know, the country that, that uh, where this came home to me was Guinea-Bissau. It's a small country, perennially in, in fragility, uh, and was getting just a piddly little, uh, uh, little amount of aid. And they were having, you know, serious problems, say, with electricity. They, 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 you know, they, they needed very little money to rebuild the electricity plant, the one electricity plant in the country. Uh, but they didn't have enough money, and so the power kept going out. And of course, that makes it easier for rebels to run around and shoot people. Um, and uh, that just got kept getting worse. So I began to think, and, and the, the, on the positive side, that maybe this way of allocating aid had a problem with it. <laughs> Even though, as I said, I contributed to the <laughs> analytical foundation. So I think it was well versed on uh, strong foundations. Uh, but there may be a problem, which is, we should be thinking, for these countries, we should be thinking of aid not necessarily as just allocating it where it's most productive, but rather think of it as taking a risk. It's a bit like venture capital. So with Guinea-Bissau, if we can continue to allocate aid the way we normally do, they'll never grow. So why don't we just take a gamble and put a lot of money into Guinea-Bissau and that still may not work. But if it does work, that will get them out of this trap. And that's the, that's the way in which we, we evolved this idea of the fragility trap, that too many countries were, were, were uh, faced with this uh, syndrome of uh, getting, getting caught in a trap. And if you continue business as usual, they were not going to get out of the trap. That's the sense in which it was a trap. Now. What that says about fragility is that these are countries, is really how they got into the trap in the first place. Because then you start looking at how, uh, you know, how they ended up in the situation. These are countries where the, the system of governance was so weak that the state had no longer was able to provide basic security to its public. Now, it, it, and that's sort of a fundamental function of the state. But the, the truth is that if, you're, if the state is unable to provide basic security, chances are it's unable to provide a lot of other things, like basic education or health or water or sanitation. And that's why this, the, the, the fragility is really a, a syndrome of a complete breakdown of the institutions that make a, a state function. <laughs>